Praise thy holy name, Father, on this your Sabbath day that you have given us to rest in you, that we should be refreshed, renewed, and brought into your holiness, that we can grow more in you and learn to rest in your hands and in your care. Bless this Sabbath. Bless this Sabbath for your people. In these difficult times and days, bless each Sabbath, Sabbath day with a mighty blessing of renewal in the name of Yeshua HaMashiach. Well, I've come to you today, and I really f firmly felt strong to address this. And I'm going to name this video, Who Are We? Who are we? There's so many debates, so many questions, so many people are arguing and fighting who they are or who they're not but who are we so I'm going to take you to first Peter beginning at the second chapter verse first it plainly tells us who we are and what we ought to be Not all this fighting and grumbling that I am better than you, I am called, I am holy, I am righteous. You know what, people? Grow up and wake up. We are nothing without Yeshua, Jesus Christ. Absolutely nothing. Without Him, we would become the sacrifice on that altar of, for our sins. You don't understand that. That's why Jesus come. That's why He died. And that's why He paid for our sins so that we would not have to hang on that cross for the sins we have done. So we're nothing without Him. We're not God's children without Him. We are not saved without Him. But through Him, we have been called. And let me read it. Wherefore, laying aside all malice, all guilt, uh, guile, and hypocrisy, and envies, and all evil spirit speaking. Do you hear that, Elizabeth? Hmm. Which you probably won't, and if you do, well, will you listen? Got to lay it aside. No more evil speaking. No more being hypocrisy, saying you're one thing and and your fruit that you bear is totally another thing. Because the fruit you bear is what comes out of your heart. As a newborn babe, desiring the sincere milk of the word, that ye may grow thereby. If so, be ye have. If so, be ye have tasted that the Lord is generous, to whom coming as unto a living stone. 
desired into indeed of a man, but chosen, disallowed, or rejected by man, but chosen of God and precious. So he's talking about this stone that was rejected by man. But he was the chosen of God and very, very precious. Ye also, as living stones, are built up a spiritual house. Ye also, you, 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 me, me, all around the world. Ye also, as living stones, are built up a spiritual house, a holy priesthood, to offer up spiritual sacrifices, spiritual sacrifices, acceptable to God by Yeshua. So we're being built up as a spiritual house to offer up spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God by Jesus Christ. Wherefore also is contained in scriptures, in the scriptures, Behold, I lie in Zion, a chief cornerstone, elect, precious, and he that believeth on him shall not be confounded. So he's laid this precious stone as a cornerstone, a elect, precious cornerstone he's laying, he laid out. And we that believe on him we're not confused. We're not set us astray on false doctrines and beliefs. We know. We know who we are. Living stones. That's who we are. As built up in a spiritual house. That's who we are. And there's a stone that's most precious that's laid as our cornerstone that we have built upon. That foundation, that cornerstone, that main stone that lays out the pattern for everything. Unto you, therefore, which believe he is precious, and I do, but unto them which be disobedient, the stone which the builder builders disallowed, the same is made the head of the corner. So this beautiful stone that man could not see the beauty and and the what is wholesome, what is firm, what is loving, what is protective, what is the main theme, the main line laid out for this spiritual building that we are. For that beautiful stone, that beautiful stone that man rejected, is the head of the corner. And a stone of stumbling. Ooh, this stone, this beautiful stone has become a stone of stumbling and a rock of offense. Even to them which stumble at the world, word, stumble at the word, being this 
disobedient were unto also they were appointed. Hmm. Okay. That beautiful stone becomes a stumbling rock of offense to every one that stumbles at the word, the word of God, being disobedient and what wherein to also they were appointed. But who are we? The rock, those living stones, which are being built up as a spiritual house? And who are we? It says in the ninth verse, But ye, you, and you, and you, and you back there, and me, are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people that ye, you, me, should show forth the praises of him who has called you, us, out of the darkness into his marvelous light, which in times past were not a people, but now, but are now the people of God, which had not obtained mercy, but now have obtained mercy. At one time, this chosen nation, this royal priesthood, was for Israel. And because of their disobedience, they didn't get to become that nation. In fact, the whole nation of Israel, the whole nation, not just the Levites, was supposed to be priesthood. A standard that was going to be set up before the world you know, all the non-believers out there, they were supposed to become a priesthood of leading others into righteousness. But, because of their disobedience and because of their doubts and and fears, and whining, and complaining. God finally looks at Moses and says, you know, this ain't going to work. They're too stiff-necked for the whole nation to become priests like I had wanted. So I'm going to pull out Levite, the tribe of Levite, to become mine. And they will become the priesthood to the nation of Israel to bring them and reconciliate them to me so they can become that priesthood. Well, guess what? That wall of partition between us and, and, and the Israel people or the Jewish people, we as mashing it together as one man, we fall in that category, praise be to his holy name, that we also now are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, and a holy nation, and a peculiar people. That's why sometimes they look at us, the worldly people look at us and think we're totally crazy. But, Revelations 5.10 speak of us. It says, And has made us unto our God, kings and priests, we shall reign on the earth. Now, there's a lot about the book the Lamb took, and, and being that he took it, and guess what? He is the corner rock, the foundation that we are being built upon. 
I want you to understand that. We are living stones that are being built into a spiritual house, a holy priesthood house, that will rule and reign here on the earth with the head cornerstone, Yeshua, Jesus Christ. That's why we have to be careful of who we are. Because above this, in First Peter, the first verse, it says, and starting at the second, uh, 22nd verse in ver uh, chapter 1, it says, Seeing ye have purified your souls in obedience, the truth through the Spirit, into unfeathered love of the brother. See that you love one another with a pure heart. Pure heart. We're not to have pure hate, but we are to have love with a pure heart. Cleansed out, fleshed out. We, we are to live according to his him. In Isaiah 62, beginning with verse 10, it says, Go thou, go through, go through the gate. He's telling us right now, today, we are to go through, go through the gate, prepare ye the way of the people, cast up. Cast up the highway, gather out the stones, lift up a standard for the people. We are that holy nation that have been called and chosen, a generation. To gather out the stones, we are being gathered out. We are need to reach out to each other and lift up a standard for the people. Behold, the Lord hath proclaimed unto the end of the world, Say ye to the daughter of Zion, and I am saying, Jerusalem, Jerusalem, the daughter of Zion, behold, your reward is with him, and he work, work, work before him, and his work before him. And they shall call them, the holy people, it says, it says over here, because ye, you, are a chosen generation, a royal peace state, a holy nation. Do you understand what I'm saying? Hallelujah. And they shall call them the holy people. The redeemed of the Lord, and thou shalt be called, sought out, a city not forsaken. We are that holy generation. We are the ones that are called out and chose in this generation, this time, these last days. For we are living in the last days. We are. Some of us won't make it all the way through. Some of us will. But I'm telling you, Yeshua is coming. He's coming. And remember who you are. But ye are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people. Praise the Lord. I love being peculiar. That ye should share forth the praise of, the, of him who hath called you out of darkness unto his marvelous light. <coughs> we are to offer up spiritual sacrifices. Bringing forth the needs of the people. 
offering them up as spiritual sacrifices that he will come down. He will heal the sick. He will help us to take care of the poor. Help us to clothe those that need to be clothed. Help us feed those that need to be fed in these last days. He needs us to become that chosen generation that we have been called to become. And I'm going to go over to Deuteronomy and read <clears throat> out of chapter 10, beginning with the verse 12. And it is God's great requirements. And it's not only spoken to Israel, it is speaking to us also for Guess what? We are the chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people. It says, And now Israel, what doth the Lord require of thee? So what does the Lord require of us? But to fear the Lord thy God, <clears throat> to walk in all his ways, and to love him, and to serve the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul. Is that not what Yeshua himself said when he was on earth? One of the great commandments. To keep the commandments of the Lord and his statures, which I command thee this day for thy good. We are to, to keep them for our good, our advancement. Behold, the heaven and the and the heavens of heaven is the Lord's, and thy God, the earth also, which all that therein is. It's all God's. Everything. The heaven of heavens, the, the earth is God's. Only the Lord had a... Let me go back. <clears throat> Only the Lord had a delight in thy fathers to love them. And he chose their seed after them, even you, above all the people, as it is this day. He's saying, I, I loved your fathers. He has chosen their seed. And we're part of that seed. We're part of that seed of Abraham. Even you, above all the people that it is this day. He has chosen us that has come out, surrendered ourselves totally to him, not into church doctrines, man-made beliefs that put burdens more on us than what the love of God, they'd rather beat us down, keep us down, and destroy us, if they can, with condemnation. But we are. He chose their seed after them. Even you, above all people, as it is today, even you are chosen. Wake up. Listen. You. You, 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 me. Circumcise before, therefore, the foreskin of your hearts, and be no more stiff necked. Back in Abraham's time, it was a covenant, a blood covenant, to sacrifice that foreskin of every male. And give it to God. Purifying them. But we, on the other hand, now that are born again to the blood of Yeshua, Jesus Christ, and coming one with him, and becoming that peculiar nation, that holy nation, we need to circumcise our hearts. The foreskin of our hearts and give it to him 
For the Lord your God is God of gods and the Lord of lords, a great God, a mighty and a terrible, which regardeth not person nor taketh reward. So he has, he doesn't regard one person above another, and nor does he take rewards. He has executed the judgment of the fatherless and widow and love the stranger in giving him food and raiment. So he has made it a judgment to take care of the fatherless widows and loving the strangers in giving him food and raiment. Some would like to cut the heads off of those strangers, but he says, no. Love ye therefore the strangers. This is his command. It's not talking about your brothers and sisters. Love ye therefore the strangers, for ye were strangers in the land of Egypt. We are strangers in this land of Egypt right now, the world. Thou shalt fear the Lord thy God, him shalt thou serve, and to him shalt thou cleave. Swear by his name. He is thy promise. He is thy God, and that hath done for thee this great and terrible thing which thine eyes hath seen. And, and Israel seen what he did over in Egypt to bring them out with all the power. Thy father went down into Egypt with three score and ten people. And now the Lord thy God hath made thee as the stars of heaven for multitude. See, when Yeshua come down here to earth, born as a baby, he chose twelve to follow him and minister with him. He started out with a meager bunch of people. But it has become as the stars of heaven now. We have become as the stars of heaven. We who are that chosen generation, a royal priesthood and a holy nation, a peculiar people. For we... We should share, show forth. We should show forth the praises of him who hath called us out of darkness into his marvelous light. I mean, in times past, we weren't that. But we are now. And we are called out in these last days to help others, to love others, to feed other people, to, to help nourish them and bring them in. That is what we are called to do. Reach out in love and bring them in to Him. For we are that royal priesthood. We are that generation that has been called out. And we are to set a standard, purifying our hearts in love, and reaching out to the people that don't know him, the strangers that don't know him, we will reach out and bring them in, in love and kindness. And if they need help, help them. If they need food, feed them. If they need clothes to wear, clothe them. If they need prayers, pray for them. Love them. Love them with the love that Yeshua had for you when he died on that cross. Because he loved you. He gave his life so that we could become that peculiar generation. And he died for that stranger out there that so many want to curse and, and throw away as garbage. No one was created as garbage. We are created in his image to do his holy will so father i come to you on this awesome sabbath day 
I come to you, I raise my hands to you, and I pray that you will send blessings down upon us on this your holy day. This day that we can grow and that you can manifest yourself in us throughout this week. For the neighbor that we see, for that person that we work by at work, for that little child walking down the street, let us pray for them and love them even when they are unlovable. Love them so that they will see the standard that we are supposed to have in Yeshua loving other people. That standard that God, Yahweh Himself, set forth upon this earth. We are that holy nation. We are that royal priesthood that is standing here on earth physically shedding out prayers to you, Father. Bring us in. Forgive us. Clean us up. And make us like unto you, Yeshua HaMashiach. So that we can win others for you. Praise be to your holy name. Blessings, people. Remember who you are.